<laughs> this thing is rapid. These batteries are as heavy as the tools themselves. Look at this. That is an absolute whopper. So we've got those, we've got all the bits. They sent everything I think we need. They sent a blade with it. I didn't even think about that, so that's good. But the main priority today is to get a new drain cut in. And we've basically got two lines that we could work off. Either this one here, which is quite a neat line because it's the edge of what was poured along the front of the barn. So we could use that as our straight edge or this one. So what I've done using the laser is I've gone around and just seen where our high points are. On that end, we do have a drain of sorts. Uh, it's, it is cleared out. It goes down and along just to kind of a soak away. The main priority is to bring everything this way, I think now. So if we can get enough of a fall, we'll come along all the way to this front edge here. And then we'll have to put a connection in probably to catch some of the silt as well. That's what we've got the other end, like a uh, silt sink, I guess, that you can clear out. Um, and then the water will come out and we'll go that way. So if we are gonna use that line, which is nice and straight, we can cut along that. And then we need to know what distance to come across. And I've got this. I've got this to base it on because we've got a mini digger in the barn. So we'll cut it to this sort of size. This might be useful to pull everything out once it's broken and then we can get it all filled in and it's a 150 mil channel. In a recent video, Joe and I traveled up to the Speedy Expo and we visited all the different stands and all the different tools. And on our travels, we came across the MX Fuel stand and Elliot, who was showing us around the tools then, kindly offered to pop round to the farm and show us some other gear. And of course, we weren't one to turn him down on his offer. And sure enough, a couple of weeks later, he popped over and we got him to help us out with our channel drainage. So here he is with a van full of goodies and also he's brought the all important floor saw attachment and some water accessories so we can get our saw cutting nice and straight, nice and clean and dust free. Right, Elliot's here from Milwaukee MX. So he's gonna give us the lowdown on everything we're gonna start with. We've got the kit out on hire um, but there's a few extra bonus bits. Floor saw? Yep. Yep. Um, which is... So what's different on here? Because obviously we just hired out the handheld bit. What we've got here is a uh, what we call our uh, floor saw trolley. Okay. Um, what we can actually do is fit the disc cutter, actually to mount it to the trolley to actually use it as a floor saw. And we could also mount a water attachment, um, obviously to uh, keep the blade cool and obviously help with the cutting as well. What we've also obviously got, he's got dead bands on like a safety safety switch as well. So, to, to normally what you do with the, with the uh, saw itself, you pull the trigger, yeah, and away you go. Whereas obviously you can't do that. Um, so you've got actually control at the back of the trolley itself. Yeah. Or, or the car. Safer than the cable tie. Oh quite. <laughs> yeah, 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 just a little bit. So all you actually do is push the button. I've got a dead man on. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. And what's that? Spare. So that's just for us, yeah, that's just a spare battery. Just just gives you an extra signal, so traipsing right. in and out. Yeah. So like your depth adjustment. Yeah. So obviously you, you'll, what you'll do, start the start the machine up, which we'll do in a second, and then obviously lead it in. Obviously you start the water, and then just once we've got the depth set, work his way along. Turn that on. So now we've got water, so you can hear the con water yeah. be going. It's just makes it a little bit more portable, that's all. And you haven't got a hose to chop. Yeah, exactly. It's just to get away from all trailing cables, hoses, just to make it a lot easier. Yeah. Um, these are brilliant. These are brilliant.
I think it's fair to say that Jay's not the biggest fan of two-stroke and petrol tools, especially if there's blades and spinny things involved. So she's quite keen to have a go on this. Obviously, it's really controlled in the way that it's on the floor saw attachment. So I guess it's just like mowing the lawn, right? Of course, thinking I knew best, I tried a different method of scoring it shallower and then coming in for a second pass. In actual fact, we ended up drifting off a little bit more doing that and Joe's technique was far better than mine. Right, we made a good start. We've done the full 25 meter or 20 meter stretch all the way along. We came off course a little bit now and then. That's just because there's a load of bumps and lumps in the concrete where bits are missing and things like that. So what we're going to do now is a bit of a comparison is freehand it. Um, and we're going to aim for about 300 mil just under of a channel all the way along. Then that way we can come back in afterwards and just break that out easier. But we're going to just see floor saw versus handheld and then uh, see how we get on. Well, what did I learn on day one? I think it was probably that the floor saw attachment is better suited to a really smooth floor, maybe a warehouse floor or a tarmac car park or something like that. As soon as you get some lumps and bumps, the wheels drifted off a little bit and it was actually harder to keep a straight line. I also hadn't spotted that it's got a couple of sneaky wheels on it as well, which Elliot soon showed me. Um, I'll maybe use the wheels and then so, yeah, I'm not um, sure how much I was using them actually. You, you want you, you use a pivot, didn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I, was, I was using the wheels and then just drop it, just drop it, yeah, and yeah. move it along. So of course the initial score line that going along, you have to hold hold it at that point. But then second pass, you drop onto those wheels. And to be honest, looking at the lines afterwards, I think I'm straighter without the trolley. But maybe that's just me. I can't say I kept a tally of how many batteries we got through here, however we're looking at I think it was 50 linear meters of solid concrete in the end, uh, so we got through a significant amount of batteries, we always had one on charge, ideally we'd have two uh, on charge as well, that way you know if you need to take a break, have a tea break, let the batteries catch up with you and then straight back on the tools. As you're nearing the end of the battery and as you're at full depth cut, you could audibly hear it just bogging down a little bit, like you might do on a two-stroke as well. And at that point, you just either need to go a little bit shallower or perhaps just change your angle slightly. This top one? Yeah, push that and it should, should light up. Yeah. Yeah, and you're ready to go. And is it one speed wonder? Yeah, that's like, it. Yeah, you pull the trigger and off you go. Where is the trigger? <laughs> Just that? Yeah. Oh, oh maybe I didn't turn it off. It did flash blue. But... Oh, yeah, yeah. It's a good job I got all this on oh, film. No, Just to show you.
Yeah, that's way thicker. You don't feel the vibration at all, do you? No, no, not at all. No, really, 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 like, really low. STS drill. Be like <laughs> for hours after the top unit itself is separate to the tube, so this is sprung loaded to obviously uh, oh. reduce vibration and obviously. Uh, so the handles to this is just one one piece. Yes, yeah, completely one so piece. The whole yeah. thing moves. Yeah, yeah. And this is barely moved either. The battery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, so uh, we should be able to do all of that in one. Yeah. One he, no, no problem at all. Yeah, no problem at all. Against a bit. Hey. And then just, yeah. <laughs> Come on, you can also stop it. So the only problem on a breaker is uh, if you have one, you need two, just in case you get one stuck. You yeah. <laughs> yeah, with that one, yeah, yeah. If you, but I guess you, it seems to come out alright actually. And what, this, this what a lot of people better. What a lot of people do is they go in to the uh, material, then they'll pull it back and obviously lift up the concrete or whatever's at the front just to uh, release it a little bit. Yeah, a little yeah. Bit of pressure and obviously pull it out. But yeah, sometimes you've got to be careful not to go too deep. So you and then you're like, do out. I just go a little bit more and then it'll yeah. break free? <laughs> yeah, it? it's not going to happen. You just got to go deeper and deeper and deeper. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. like get out the pickaxe. Yeah. But um, but no, you won't. Uh... Going in on a bit of an angle and then pulling out on an angle seems to work better. Yeah, yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. Oh well, that's amazing. So we're going to get on and cut the next bit either this afternoon or tomorrow, and then carry on in our own time and let you go and have some lunch. Fantastic. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think we've proved that the floor saw is it way easier to use, but it needs to be quite smooth. Yeah. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Yeah. It's. Whereas a lumpy farmyard, no, it, it works better with a nice level surface, um, just so you can cut nice straight lines. Yeah, unlike with what we're doing. <laughs> and at least it's not back breaking. You're not. You can stand. No, I mean much. you were fi like you were happy with that, but whereas I'm not sure you would have been comfortable no. handheld. Yeah, but um, no, it's fine. We're going to be able to tidy up the little staggered bits, easy enough, and then break it all out. Then get dray laying. Oh, you were telling me about the. So it's got one key. So you've got one key uh, installed in the machine and the battery. Um, Which means you can put an invisible fence you can put, you can around the farm, let's say, and then if someone took disappears, it out, yep, it, it just can disengages alert, it. It'll alert, uh, alert the user, yep, can do that. Uh, also track it, so if it got uh, pinched, um, you can... We can send got, Joe after him. Good chance you can, uh, good chance you can <laughs> retrieve Maggie. it. Yeah, send the um, and then also for safety purposes, you can actually disengage it or you can turn it off. So it obviously stops people using it. Kids. Uh, kids, exactly. <laughs> um, so it stops, any, stops anybody using it who you don't want to use it. And uh, the only person can actually uh, turn it on and off is, is yeah. yourself, uh, the person who's got the app on their, uh, their device, mm. which is really clever. Right, it's been far too long. I really need to finish this. Drainage that we started cutting in last Monday. It's been horrible weather for the last few days and all of this has been underwater and flooded. So although we wouldn't have had much dust, I probably wouldn't have been able to see what I'm doing. Blue skies today, so I'm gonna try and get that cut out because I'm sure the Speedy want their gear back at some point. I think I've got enough batteries uh, set up and I also found that they did send four of those big batteries. I just had them left in the car. So we should be good to go. I'm gonna get another one on charge straight away because the cutting is using more. This is where we left off on Monday. I chipped everything out, really easy, nice and clean. I am gonna recut the line uh, where it was drifting off a little bit just because of the bumpy ground, that cart that it was in. Didn't really work as well as it could have here. It's a lot quieter than my two-stroke still saw. However, it's, the, it's almost the noise of the blade on the concrete rather than the engine. So it still, it still needs PPE. A bit of a problem in as much as it's 
flooded here. Not down to the saw, it's more down to the fact that it's just standing water still. So I've cut to here, what I'm going to use is switch the breaker now, break it out and then hopefully this water can drain into the ditch a bit like it has along there and either seep away or head that way. This thing is rapid. Gone are the days of the old SDS now. Now some of this was only 50 mil to 75 mil thick. Get up to this end and it must be the original slab. The other areas were just patches I think that have been repaired in the past. Up here it was just full depth, kind of 4 or 5 inches, 100 mil, 125 mil and it took a lot of breaking and also the digger at the end of the day. At the end of the run, I turned it back across to the drain. I think it should be fine as far as the actual drainage that we put in. I may even be casting this in concrete myself. But again, this was really thick, this area, so it needed to be broken out into small pieces and then dealt with. All right, so we're now at a point where we've cut out our whole drain and broken out all of it. I've just remembered there's about a 300 mil section down the other end to get rid of. Once that's out, it's either a case of doing this by hand or putting our nice new battery tools away and jumping into an old diesel digger. However, that will be for a future video. What we've proved is that it is completely doable. Yes you've got to keep on top of charging the batteries but you've got to keep on top of mixing the fuel and it's far more enjoyable especially that breaker that breaker probably would have done this in one battery change uh, whereas the saw we're cutting through deep full depth concrete and yes we had to cycle through a load of batteries but it didn't slow us down it just meant we had to make sure we were always charging one up in the background I'm going to get on and do this whilst it's still got daylight um, but a huge thank you to Elliot for coming down uh, and spending half of a day here. This isn't a Milwaukee sponsored video in any way. We went up, uh, as you might have seen in a recent video, to the Speedy Expo where all the tool manufacturers had a different stand, different tools, and they were pushing all sorts of things. We were looking purely at what tools that we normally use in petrol that we can now look at switching to in battery just for ease of use, cleanliness especially working indoors in the future in some of these conversions and older buildings petrol is just a nightmare I've only had to do it a couple of times when we're cutting out openings in the old garage but 30 seconds to a minute with a two-stroke uh, cut-off saw is horrendous you know the fumes you don't realize it until you're in a confined space it's just not good for you now I'm hoping that by the time this video goes out I will have made a decision on it I was going to use the precast um, open channels, they're sort of a dished concrete like you see at the side of a road, sort of a, a more of a commercial grade drain, but not with slats or grate or anything like that. Just an open dip, dish, 
about 150 mil wide, I think they were. That's what I've allowed for, but by the time you buy 30 meters of that for a semi-permanent job, because all this will be relayed in the future, I imagine, it got quite costly. You know, it's three, 400 pounds, and then you've got to spend the time laying them. So I'm now thinking if we've got a long, clean kind of strip here, we dig it out to an even depth and we put our concrete in, can I shutter it and use a either a shaper, sort of a blank, um, and screed it in a way, or, or even shutter in a bit of guttering or something. Uh, I've read a few different options, so hopefully I've got the answer. If you want to tell me what I should have done, you can put it in the comments. If you do want to see the other options that came up in the show, as long as the MX range in full, then I'll put a link to the speedy uh, show that we did. Uh, I'll put a link to that video because we went through everything. Um, I've got to jump on that digger now and get on with it, make the most of this dry weather. Here's that last little section I haven't cut through yet. Once that's broken out, we're coming along. We'll put a connection in here and then I've got to get these pigs moved then put a drain in from here all the way across there, pick up on the other drain, then all that water can go where it's meant to be going. I'll leave a link to anything you need to know about down below, including sausages. No, I won't do that. But, you know, all the tools, head down below, find all that out. Thanks again to Speedy for sponsoring these videos. And thank you for all watching. Remember, if you can, do it yourself, and we'll see you next time.